Hi there and welcome to this video and today we're going to take a look at the Nikon Snapbridge app. It's something that I use a fair bit in various different scenarios and it's got some useful functionality. It is however a little bit clunky. Um, we did a recent two minute tip video on how to connect your phone and your camera. It can be a little bit problematic. It is a slight weak point of the Nikon ecosystem but that is similar to many of the manufacturers. Some have got it slightly better um, than others. The Nikon one when it works is really quite good however it can be a little bit clunky as I say. So hopefully you haven't had problems with um, connecting it um, but I thought it was worth just taking a look at the latest version of the app. Make sure you've got the latest version because the version that was released probably about a month, two months ago has a lot more functionality built into it. Um, Nikon upgraded it, which was really good. It was one of my um, sort of wish list things for 2020 and they, Nikon have done, gone a little bit towards that. I think they've still got a little way to go with the app. Um, but it's really useful. Um, I've had to wait to do this video because I needed both my cameras, my Z6 and my Z7. Um, and both of them have been back to Nikon for warranty. My Z7, um, the grip rubber was delaminating um, a little bit. So um, I put that back into Nikon. I dropped it off at Nikon in London. It was back with me in 48 hours, which was brilliant. The Z6, I was having problems with the XQD card sticking and it wasn't releasing in a consistent way and it had been doing that for a few months. I thought I'd get that sorted. That was with Nikon about two weeks um, in the end because the XQD card holder is obviously attached to the main PCB in the camera and therefore Nikon had to get in a new PCB um, and replace that whole main board in the camera which is you know a fairly big um, job for them to do. So it took about two weeks. It's back now. Obviously replacing the board meant that all my settings were back to factory settings. Um, so I've had to go through resetting up the camera which has taken a little bit of time. Interestingly the camera got back to me um, the day that uh, the firmware 3.0 was released and it did come back with 3.0 installed so I haven't had to update that which is really useful so thank you Nikon for that. Um, but let's get stuck into the Snapbridge app. I've got um, my Z6 recording me and I'm using my smartphone to monitor um, how that's going and I've got my iPad here um, set up with my Z7 um, and we'll record that so you can see what I'm doing on my Z7 um, while I'm talking to you. So obviously you first off open up the um, Snapbridge app and you get, if you've already connected your camera, you'll get a picture of the camera that's connected. Obviously if you've got multiple cameras, you may need to go into the, press the gear icon in the top right hand corner where you can add a camera, you can switch between cameras, or you can forget cameras. You can go into the Wi-Fi mode where you can um, look at what, um, what uh, images you've got on your um, camera and you can download location data. Now sometimes you may find that the Bluetooth connection doesn't naturally pick up and sometimes you've got to go in and turn off the Bluetooth on your device, turn off the camera and turn them both back on and hopefully they'll hook up. But in this main page you've got a number of options. This middle one, obviously the first one is your camera and we'll come back to that one. This one here is where you can download copies of your images from your camera onto here. You can choose to download them as a two megabyte um, a thumbnail or a full image and then finally you can connect up to the Nikon image space service and upload images from or download them from your camera to your device and then upload them to the cloud in the Nikon image space um, app. I'm going to focus mainly on um, the functionality in the app for the camera but before we do that you can set up in the, if you click on the hamburger in the top left hand corner, app options. You can choose the location data accuracy. So you can change the location data accuracy, the nickname of the device, you can show credits and you can add hashtags. So if we look at the functionality on the um, main page here, the first one is auto link. Um, I have that set to on so it automatically links my smartphone or my device to the relevant camera. You can then choose to automatically download a two megapixel version of each shot you take. Um, I tried that, it was quite battery intensive on my smartphone and on my camera and also it caused a slight conflict in the workflow between my mobile workflow and my desktop workflow so I don't tend to do that now. I only download if I specifically need an image. 
you can synchronize the clocks between your device and the camera and you can also synchronize location data so every time you take a shot it will tag the shot in the um, in the metadata with the location it was taken at you can as i say choose to download pictures and if you want to do this then the um, the connection between your device and the camera has to change from the Bluetooth, which is quite local, you have to be within a few meters, um, or the devices have to be within a few meters to connect to Wi Fi. Now, I've tried Wi Fi in this building, which is quite a heavy building, lots of concrete floors, and I can get probably 10 to 15 meters away through walls and still control the camera, still control the camera from the device. So, if you're out in the open, you've got a clear line of sight, you can get much further with a Wi Fi connection. So, probably quite good if you're looking to use the, your device as a remote control. So in here you can pick an image um, from the ones that are on your camera and you can choose to download it either as a 2 megapixel um, thumbnail or as the original format. So quite useful there if you're on the go and you want to just download one or two images to do um, specific edits on the go perhaps. At the bottom we've got remote photography and this is where a lot of the functionality is that I find quite useful. At the top here you can choose to, you can change between still images and video which is quite useful and the functionality is different between the two. Um, you can see how many shots are remaining on the XQD card or how much space is remaining on the XQD card by number of shots and you can see the battery capacity. At the top here you can choose which mode you're shooting in. PASM are the, the modes that are available, um, just those four modes, but that's more than enough. And then at the bottom here, you can see the settings for your camera. And if you click on the ones that are white, you can obviously make changes to them. Um, the ones that are grayed out, you can't. So if we're in manual mode, all of them are available because you can obviously change the shutter, the aperture, the exposure compensation, the ISO, and the white balance. Now, interestingly, um, in terms of um, the ISO, if you have the setting in your camera set to auto ISO, then ISO in the app will be greyed out. Now, one of the things that is a slight limitation is you can only control these, uh, this amount of functionality in the app. If you find you want to change something like the focus area or the type of focusing from continuous to single shot focusing, you have to come out of the app, change it on the camera and then come back into the app because while you're in the app, it disables all of the um, controls on your camera. Um, so you just have to plan a little bit. It is slightly limiting, but uh, that is one of the limitations of the um, app as it stands today. You can move the focus point on the screen by just clicking and you can see it goes green to show it's focusing. However, again, if you have your camera set up so that when you touch the um, LCD, it focuses and then takes an image or a shot, um, you can't do that on the app. You have to focus and then hit the shutter release button and it will take the shot. If you click on the gear wheel at the bottom right, you can choose whether you download pictures and if so, what format. You can choose to use your self timer and you can change the um, period that the self timer goes for is three seconds, five seconds or 10 seconds. And you can turn off or on the live view depending on how you want to use it. If you turn it off, then the image won't appear on the screen. So that's um, stills. If we go into video, um, you'll notice here that you can only um, use manual and program mode. Um, that's not a big problem for me. I tend to use manual mode anyway for video. Now what's quite useful in video is that if you've got it set to AFF mode and then face detect uh, like I'm doing here and I'm moving around, I can see on my smartphone that the, the the focus box is holding my face and it's moving with me. I can't show you that on here because my face can't be in two places at once. Um, but that's quite useful. Um, obviously in here you've got, um, if you go into manual mode, again, all of the same functionality of shutter speed, 
um, aperture, exposure compensation, ISO, and then white balance is there. Now, one of the limitations in video mode that I found is that not all white balance modes um, work with the app. Uh, what I've had is because I'm using studio lights, they're quite predictable. I know the Kelvin value of them broadly. I was using a white balance that was tailored to the lighting setup. However, that doesn't work in the app. So I'm using um, today, I'm using auto white balance. It seems to work quite well so long as you don't get too many changes in the lighting. Um, so there are limitations. It is quite useful. Um, you can, of course, start and stop your video using your smart device. So it's a, a remote control, which is um, quite useful functionality. In video mode, um, you don't obviously get the option to download thumbnails. Um, so you just get the self timer option in um, the gear wheel at the bottom right hand side. As I said, one of the limitations of the app is that while you're using the app, all of the other functionality on the camera is locked and therefore you have to um, disconnect the app, go in and change it and then reconnect. That can be a slight um, challenge, but for things like this kind of video where actually you're concentrating on, um, you get the, the setup right and then you're, you're concentrating on actually um, presenting to it, um, it's fine. Where it may be a challenge is in stills photography where you've got changing conditions, um, where there's a, perhaps a moving subject. So worth thinking about how you might use this. There are limitations, but there are some really great use cases, as I find. If you, if you forget your remote control and you want to um, take a long exposure shot, for example, you can connect up your smartphone. You can use it as a mobile trigger. Um, that's really useful functionality. So I hope you found this video useful. It's given you an insight into some of the SnapBridge functionality. As I said, it was on my 2020 wish list for Nikon to upgrade. They've gone some of the way to doing that. And hopefully, as we've seen with their upgrade to firmware version 3, they're putting quite a lot of effort into upgrading the Z series um, ecosystem. So maybe we will see some further upgrades to the SnapBridge app during 2020 and 2021. Hope you found this video useful. How are you using SnapBridge? Are you finding it useful? or are you finding it slightly clunky like um, I said earlier? If you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell below and you'll be notified of future videos. And I look forward to seeing you in a future video.